Welcome to Nigel App Tutorials. My name's Nigel. This is part six of the camera intent tutorials. In the previous tutorial, part five, we showed you how to uh, assign a location in your cam in your device storage. So when the camera took a photo, it put that image into that location. The size of that image is actually the full size of the camera image and modern day cameras can have up to 16 megapixels or more which does make a large image size and if you're loading that image into your phone just to view it on your phone your phone doesn't need that it just needs the size of the display so you could be consuming a huge amount of RAM which might not seem obvious at the time, but could slow your device down and cause problems later on. So what this tutorial is going to be about is showing you how to efficiently and effectively scale down the size of the photos for the actual image view size itself. So you're effectively just viewing what you need to view and you're not consuming too much RAM, which could affect not only your application, but the whole um, environment, the whole Android OS environment as well. Okay, so we'll make a start on that. First thing we want to do is create a new function. I'm going to say, let's say it's set reduced. So set reduced image size, in other words we're going to reduce the image size that we will then assign to the image view. Okay, the method we're going to be doing this is we're going to be scaling down the image. So what we need to do is we need to get the width and height of our image view that we've um, set up in the layout. And then we also want to get the width and height of the actual camera image itself and work out the differences between them to get a scale and then we can feed that back into Android to do a sample which will return a smaller image to put into the image view. Okay so we'll just get our image view sizes first and if we go back up to the top here so you'll notice that we've got the M capture image view here so that's where the photo is going to be assigned to. So if we just create a variable here, so if we just call it, let's call it, um, let's call it the um, target image view. width and we can call the view and from the view itself we can get the width of it by just calling get width and we're going to use the same mythology to get the height Okay, so we've got our first set of values. These are, think of these as the target values of what we would like the photo image size to match when we load it, assign it to the image view. Okay, the next step is we want to find out the width and the height of the actual photo itself. 
and to do that um, the bitmap factory uh, gives us uh, options variable which will help us get the values of the width and the height of the photo itself so we're going to create a new var variable Let's call it BM options, but it's short for Bitmap Factory options. Okay, we've got that now. Um, we need to make a slight change to this variable because what we're going to do is we're going to be actually doing a load of the actual image itself. Um, we're not going to. We're going to be just sort of doing what's called a um, a sample load. We're not actually going to be loading the actual image itself, but we're going to sort of do a sample or a dummy load just to get the values of the image itself. To do that, we need to set the bitmap factory options. And just decode bounds to true. Right, so now we can actually load the image itself of actually loading it, but just to get the actual information and details of that image. first part of the file is going to be as we did before in the on activity result we're just going to load the file location and the next part here we're going to fire, um, assign, put into is the bitmap factory options so what that will do is that's going to fill up our bitmap factory options with the details of the actual image itself. And we can get the height. So let's create two more variables, which is going to be call it camera image width. And then from the bitmap options, we can do a out width, which is the width of the camera image. We'll do the same again for height. Okay, we've now worked out the height and the width of the actual photo image. And we know the height and the width of the image view where we want to assign that image to. So now we're going to work out the scale factor, the differences between the two that will feed back into when we uh, make our call to get the bitmap. So this is called a scale factor, creating another variable called scale factor. And we want to sort of get the minimum differences between the photo and the image view widths and the heights. So we we'll use this math Java function given to us. And so the first one we'll pass, work out the, try and work out the differences between the width and the height, and we'll grab which one is smaller. So let's do the width first. And let's put in the height as well, height difference. Okay, now we can now feed that scale factor back into another variable inside our bitmap options. That's called the in sample size. So we'll feed the um, the minimum between the math min, minimum 
dif uh, scale differences between either the width or the height will feed that into this in sample size and what that will tell when we want to create a bitmap that will say look this is the differences between the photo and what we want to assign it to here's the scale here can you please give me a smaller image if applicable so I can load into my image view okay so we so go back to our bitmap options and in sample size and assign it to the scale factor let's fix this little problem in the syntax so we've now correctly initialized our scale factor okay so we've assigned that to the sample size next thing we need to do is up here in our in just decode bounds we uh, set it as true so in other words we just want to do a dummy read of the bitmap not effectively load it this time we want to effectively load it so we're going to have to set that flag to false again so we can actually load the bitmap right so now we can actually load the bitmap and if it's a very large photo file that's now going to be sampled and decreased so we don't consume too much memory from our phone device So this function is going to be very similar to what we did in the onactivity result, but we're going to pass it the bitmap options argument to the function call as well. So we have our bitmap, and and the bitmap I expect to be reduced in size, so we can now. Um, assign the bitmap to the image view. Okay, we've now set up this function. This function is going to be called from the on activity result. So let's go into there and make the appropriate changes. Okay, we're not going to call these two lines here because effectively we're doing that in the set reduced image size function. So we can come out, comment out these two lines. And now it's a matter of just calling our function. And that's it. So let's run this application, see if it works. Application is running. As usual, we just want to record that just to show on the display. And take a photo of the cup of green tea again. And we have the actual image itself. Effectively, nothing to change from the previous tutorial, except what I expect to see here is this. 
this bitmap image greatly reduced, so we're not taking up too much RAM in the system, and keeping everything happy with our phone. Okay, we can stop recording now. Okay, as with the flow of these tutorials, we're going to step through the code changes we made, and in this particular instance, we should be able to see the values of the scale factor and even the widths and heights dimensions of our image view and our actual photos itself. So we'll get into exploring the uh, debugger in Android Studio a little bit more of this as well. Okay, so we can remove these breakpoints here. All we really need to do is put what single breakpoint in our new function here. Let's close down the application. Okay, let's run that. Let's run the debugger. Let's run through the application again before we get to our breakpoint. Oh, we had an extra breakpoint here. Carry on. Photo. We've now had our breakpoint. So let's step through the code and see what see what happened. Okay, so target width seven oh four pixels, target height eight six two. We're creating our bitmap fat uh, bitmap options object. We're setting in code, in just decode bounds to true, so we don't actually load the image. We just want to um, do a dummy read of it just to get the values. Now let's see what the camera. We've already been. We can always see the out width and out height. So already you can see that the width and the height is a lot more than the actual view size. So too much photo actually to put into our image view so yeah this is a this is an appropriate um, need to actually reduce the image just so it's a similar size to the image view you know we can get those variables We've got them there now the scale factor let's see what that is where are you scale factor so scale factor of three so basically we're saying that our photos are three times bigger than that at they need to be for our image. So our photos are three times the size of what they actually need to be for our image. So we're going to assign that scale to our scale, uh, in sample size. So we want to say, look, we want to we want to do some sampling and get a reduced bitmap back. And we also set our indico bones to false. We actually want to load the image this time. Okay, we're going to be loading the file with our bitmap options. Let's give it a few seconds. And we've got our photo reduced bitmap. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to open that up and see if I can see the width and the height. So it's giving us uh, a width of 1200 and a height of 1600. So when it does the samplings it does it by a factor of two to the closest, closest appropriate size to our image without reducing the quality of the image. So it's half the size of the image. So we have saved RAM. Close that and finish off running this. And for all rights and purposes, you don't see a difference, but the actual bitmap that's been loaded into this image view is considerably smaller than the bitmap we loaded in, in the previous tutorial. So this is this is very important. You might not think, well, it works, that's fine, but if your application starts affecting everything else and causes your phone to run slowly, people are not going to be too happy. 
So this is a prime consideration. Think about RAM, think about how much RAM you are using. And this is one of the, this is a method, especially with bitmaps, and photos, and files. This is a consideration uh, method to only use all you need to use in RAM considerations. Okay, that's it to this tutorial. Um, this was actually the final part to the camera intent tutorials. In this tutorial, we learnt about RAM considerations work out how much RAM you're loading, especially from a file, and, and, you, and how you could actually downsize it, scale it down to be more appropriate for what we're sending it to, an image view. Um, the image view here was quite a large one, but imagine if you've got tiny thumbnails in a gallery. You don't want to be sticking megapixels into that. It's going to cause that your application to run slowly, and you're going to use up all the RAM in the system. So we learned about that. We learned how Android provides us functionality in loading a file, uh, not doing a dummy read of a file to get the information from it, and how to, how it will scale down a photo for you, just purely for this method of optimizing your image sizes. Anyway, that's it to this camera intent tutorials. I've got a few ideas for follow-on tutorials as well. Not ready to disclose them just yet. But if you want to keep learning about Android and enjoy my tutorials, like and don't forget to subscribe. That's all for this one. Bye.